professor for the course. Um, Mahmoud Rahman is also here, who is the teaching assistant for the course. And, uh, and Brittany Harris, who is the course administrator for global education. And um, uh, we've, Mahmoud and I have been working on this class for maybe, maybe three or four years now. Um, we've been to Nepal, which is where the course takes place a number of times. And then Brittany joined um, global education uh, at the worst time ever, <laughs> right? As the pandemic hit and, uh, but, uh, uh, Mahmoud and I are the ones that are aware of the course content and uh, Brittany is the expert on how to, how to do everything from registering to where do you go for the scholarships? Um, uh, what do you do if you need to apply financial aid to this? Uh, all of the very specific details about basically your, your registration and making sure you're ready um, and you have everything um, together in time uh, to be able to take the course. Uh, and I believe Brittany is not going to be able to stay for the whole time here, but we'll make sure that she has, um, that we have her contact information provided. Um, so if you have very specific questions, and if you forget, you can always connect with me and I can connect you with, with her. Um, so, so the class is called Conservation Storytelling, and uh, we built it, um, uh, for uh, some some reasons that had to do with our own history. Um, Mahmoud and I are both uh, scientists, biological scientists that have uh, changed our career paths and moved into, um, uh, into communication, specifically documentary filmmaking. And the reason that we changed the game um, with our careers was because uh, we had been witnessing major impacts happening problems uh, between the general public and uh, science um, and the trust of science. And the examples that we used to use were uh, uh, climate change and evolution, uh, uh, where close to 50% of the people in the United States didn't believe that either were worth considering, um, including our previous president. And, um, and now we'll never get a better example than the um, uh, the, the pandemic uh, and uh, thousands and thousands of people are dying as a result of this mistrust. So that that's pretty important to consider. And um, uh, it, it turns out that a lot of it has to do with uh, just a, a lack of uh, uh, effort on our part as scientists to bridge that gap and to talk to um, other people about what we do and to include them um, when we do try to get our information out. Um, we usually are, we are trained to talk to our peers and we're not trained to talk to everyone else. Um, so we've actually learned as much as we could about the, um, the theory and everything behind, the, behind the, the ideas that we're proposing. And, uh, and we've, like I said, shifted our careers totally towards communications in uh, filmmaking. And we actually run a company called uh, Kesara Sara Films, which is a small production company. And, um, but we didn't wanna just do it for ourselves. We don't wanna be the only people telling these stories. We want to train other people so that they can tell stories. Cause the more of us that are armed with this capacity, uh, the more likely we are to bridge this gap again. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we developed the class. Um, the class takes place in Nepal, uh, which is a, a small country, which is bordered on kind of like the South and actually the East and the West by India, and then the North by China in the area that used to be um, Tibet. And um, it's a fantastic place to do this kind of a class for a number of reasons. First, it's one of the most phenomenally beautiful places that I've seen on the planet. Mahmoud and I have traveled extensively, and I think we both agree that this one kind of checks all the check boxes. Um, it has uh, beautiful architecture. Uh, it has amazing landscapes. I mean, you're talking about the Himalayas. We actually do stay at the foot of one of the highest peaks on the planet, um, uh, which is over 8,000 meters, which is really high. Just so you know, that's three times if multiply it by three to get it in feet if, if you're if you're not really familiar with meters. Um, and it also has uh, incredible wildlife. Um, uh, many of kind of the big megafauna that you think of when you think of interesting wildlife that you don't usually get to see in North America, like 
rhinos, elephants, uh, uh, lots of different kinds of big cats. They have tigers, they have snow leopards, they have um, different kinds of jaguars uh, and, uh, and animals like that. In addition to multiple primate species, lots of different ungulates, amazing birds, reptiles, you name it, they have it. Um, and they have a, a really diverse landscape also in that they go it goes from the bottom which is more of like a plains land all the way up to the highest places on earth so um so from a a, a cinemagraphic perspective it just it can't be beat but it also is amazing from a conservation perspective as well this is a country that has very little resources um it's it's in the early developmental stages um uh only open to visitors since the 1950s and, uh, and and it's become a major tourist destination for people that like to trek uh, primarily because of the lure of Everest and then you get all these other kind of sub headers of trekkers that also like to do things that aren't quite climbing to the top of that but like to go do really long through hikes and that sort of thing so development has been very recent um, and it's not to the point where it's like you know, uh, they have big cities, but it's not like like New York City or um, Hong Kong or things that have developed for for a significant amount of time. And um, even though they have this limited, kind of like these limited resources in uh, their economy and uh, and also just what they have there, they they depend significantly on um, on uh, India uh, to get things, everything from food to gas and et cetera. Uh, but uh, but somehow they have been incredibly successful at protecting their uh, wildlife and protecting their species. Um, and I, I think it comes from a couple of different things. One is I kind of feel like it has to do with the culture there of uh, of no, not, not not wasting and, and preserving. Um, just as an example, um, the communities that are far away from the centers of the population, uh, form what are called um, uh, uh, community forests. Uh, and, and Nepal is the first time I ever stumbled across this term. It's, it's where the community members, and these are not educated people, not even grade school education. These are farmers um, who decided to come together and work as a unit voluntarily um, to protect the lands around them. Um, and uh, they also have had an amazing track record in protecting the species that they have. Poaching is an enormous issue. Uh, that's gonna be the primary story, not necessarily poaching, but wildlife trafficking that we're gonna cover as a part of this class in uh, January. Um, and um, uh, uh, they happen to have a lot of the species the poachers want, uh, rhinos, elephants, tigers, and um, prior to COVID, they had a really good record, an unheard of record um, for preventing poaching. In fact, I think they'd gone like four years without any poaching of their rhinos, which is unheard of across the planet. There are no other countries that have been able to say that. And um, it's because of the, I think the out of the box thinking because again, remember, they're very limited in the resources that they have, but somehow they're being able to um, at least come up with better solutions sometimes than other countries uh, for protecting their species and um, protecting their habitats and also protecting their, their culture um, as well. And I think that there is a lot that we can learn um, by taking you to a place like that. So uh, it's a it's a place that's good for learning how to do storytelling. And it's also a place that's good for learning about how to be better at uh, the conservation that you might want to do. Um, so we, we purposely involve um, students from very different backgrounds, um, students from uh, environmental science, biology, uh, communications and fabs of the film and video studies, but we also invite anyone because we built the class for anyone and we actually believe that the class is important for everyone. Um, because no matter what your, your study is, you want to be able to get that information out to others and, um, and you want to have a a discourse with the general public. And so while we focus on conservation stories, it's applicable to anyone and any any kind of uh, any uh, any type of any subject. Um, so the reason that we bring this diverse team with us is because we feel like that makes 
what we do, that the chances for what we do to create these, what we call super teams, um, because everyone that's a part of the team is bringing in something else that's kind of vital for us to be able to do these types of projects. Let me turn that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so for example, the, the communication students are usually focused on journalism and they understand how to fact check. They understand how to interview. They understand how to uh, cross check their sources. Uh, the science students understand how to uh, bring in information that they understand from a scientific perspective. And the film students understand how to create these stories visually. And so um, each, each group is given the ability to learn all of everything. Um, but then we, you also get to see how working as a unit can be very beneficial as well. Um, so uh, we take the class uh, to different locations. We start in Kathmandu, which is the capital. Um, and that's where we begin to give you the skill sets that you need. You're gonna be taught uh, the theory behind the communication um, ideas that we're proposing, uh, as well as the skills to build things, um, going from never having done anything but taken just general photographs all the way to producing uh, a short documentary film. Um, and, and so uh, we, every day we cover a little bit of those topics and you get practice every day. So every day there is some kind of an assignment where you build and build and build your skills as we go from one location to the next. And then the, the culminative um, part of the class is that as a class, we all work together to produce a small documentary on whatever the topic is for this class. In this particular class, it's gonna be on um, wildlife trafficking and how Nepal is dealing with that. But why? that it's also a global issue and that um, the situation during COVID has probably provided a chance for poachers to get in when they, they hadn't been before. And, uh, and we need to really focus the spotlight um, on this problem right now. So, so we take you to different areas that we specifically feel will help you also build um, skills and experience in uh, different kinds of photography and filming. Um, they add to the stories that we're covering, and you also get to learn different things about what Nepal is doing. Um, we want to take you to the high mountain areas and also the very uh, low, flat, uh, more flat anyway, uh, plains lands. And this year, what we're going to do is we're first going to go to um, uh, a little town. Um, it's the second biggest town, so I shouldn't call it little, I guess, but it's little compared to a lot of other places named called uh, Pokhara and uh, it uh, has a lake and uh, uh, is a, de a recently developed town also. I mean, I mean, the whole country is just recently developed, but it, um, it, wasn't in, it was in the 1960s that trekkers started using it as a base of re getting everything ready to go to get up into this area, which is where we're gonna go called the Annapurna Conservation Area. And, um, uh, and because it's been such a quick development, um, they're, going, they're undergoing struggles. And we're gonna look at the struggles of the protection of the area um, versus a really fast development of that area. Um, so that's, that's the, the reason that we actually focus on that spot. It's also a, a fantastic, gorgeous spot um, on the lake. And, uh, and then we head up to the mountains. Uh, the place that we go is called Marfa. And uh, it's situated about 2,500 meters, um, right at the point where you might start to have a little bit of altitude sickness. And just so you know, we've done this, uh, I don't know how many times and no one's ever had um, altitude sickness. So it's, it's, it's not a place that's dangerous and we, we picked it for that reason. Um, but it is an amazing, amazing space to be able to see these peaks around you. Um, and we do, very short, not hard hikes. These are all the flat areas around the riverbed. So you can get experience with landscape filming and landscape photography. Um, and, um, and then uh, sometimes we cover stories that are related to snow or ice like we did last year. And we get some of the B-roll, which is kind of like the bulk of what we do, we use when we create videos. Um, and you'll learn about that if you, um, if you take this class. Uh, and so sometimes we need to be in that area, um, but we wanted to, for you to all see this, this landscape and to learn about the ecology of it. Um, and that's the reason why we're still gonna visit it. And it is unbelievable. 
Uh, we then are going to head to our last location, which is uh, Chitwan National Park, uh, which is on the border with India. And just so you know, um, uh, it's kind of interesting little factoid, um, uh, that park was, uh, uh, came into being thanks to uh, one of the professors at George Mason University, who actually recently passed away, um, but uh, it was his work that uh, led to the preservation of that, that area. And we're gonna talk about that also um, when we get to uh, Chitwan. But Chitwan is an amazing space. Um, it's a national park that contains uh, phenomenal wildlife. Um, uh, the reason that we chose to take our students there is because we know we can guarantee that there will be um, uh, really interesting wildlife uh, uh, sightings. Uh, we've never been in there where we haven't found rhinos and we usually find them very close, uh, as close as 10 feet. Um, uh, and, uh, and just to, to make sure you realize it's not, you're never going to be really <laughs> in danger. We're on Jeeps that are very high up and we have a guide with us. Um, so you are you are protected, um, but um, uh, there are also um, all kinds of primates. We always see primates, we always see incredible birds, we see um, reptiles, uh, crocodiles that are endangered. We see, um, what else? We've seen sloth bears, which are really, really neat. I think we've seen those on three different trips. Uh, and the last time we went, uh, we always see fresh tiger paw marks and scratches on the trees and fresh tiger poo. Uh, but we hadn't until last year or two years, whenever 2020 was, uh, actually seen a tiger in one of my groups. We're all in different Jeeps because we can't all fit in one Jeep. Um, uh, my students actually did get to see one for the first time and filmed it. Uh, so it happens. It just is, you know, that one's more, that, that's a little luckier of a sighting, but you never know. And one time we were there and we heard one also, we could hear one off in the distance, which was pretty, I thought that was good enough. <laughs> I, but I, I admit, I want to see one too. I haven't seen one yet, but, uh, but the chance is there. Um, there are also elephants that do come into the park and believe it or not, weirdly enough, hyenas. And uh, we've never seen hyenas or the uh, the wild elephants, there are captive elephants that work for, I believe, the park. Um, and we see them every now and then um, moving, helping to move trees and stuff and that kind of thing. And you can take, uh, you can either go in the park via Jeep or riding the elephants. Um, and we choose not to ride the elephants. And I can talk to you more about why we made that choice uh, later on. But um, when we get to Chitwan, we're actually going to spend the longest time there, because this is where we're going to be covering your story about wildlife trafficking. And this is where we're going to be interviewing um, experts uh, who uh, work for the park or um, are scientists that are involved in collecting data um, in the park and, um, and then gathering all the amazing footage that we'll use to build your um, film. Um, so the class is going to take place uh, in January before the spring semester starts. Uh, usually we leave. Uh, you leave the United States around January 1st, you get to Nepal on January 3rd, um, and uh, we meet you at the airport and, uh, and take you to the hotel, and then you are with us uh, for the duration of the trip, and we actually take you back to the, the airport um, in the end, um, so you don't really have to worry about anything. Um, uh, as for the travel, a lot of my students ask, uh, are we traveling as a group or are we traveling alone? Um, you're traveling alone because I want everyone to have the ability to kind of pick what tickets they'd like. Um, some students like to come early, some like to stay late. This, this year, that might not be the best idea because of COVID, and I can talk to you guys more about that if you do have questions. But, um, uh, uh, but my students still, I make sure that everyone knows everybody and everybody can connect with everybody so that you can all work together to fly together. And so we usually get like maybe six flights that come in and each flight has from two to six of our students on it. So, and that was purposeful. They all have kind of planned and organized together so that they're all uh, flying together. So if you're worried about that part of the trip being alone, you're not gonna be alone. And even if you don't fly with other students, we are aware of every step that you take. We know all your flights, all your delays, everything, how to connect with you, you know how to connect with us. And um, you'll, you'll never be at a place where you can't get help. We'll always be there to be able to, to work through things for you. 
Um, so the class then runs till around, I think, January the 16th, and that's when you fly back to the States. Um, at that point, we've collected all, we've done all the interviews, collected all the uh, general footage, and um, we get back to the States, we start kind of just dividing the uh, workload to finish building the big film. Um, but I make it so that everyone takes on something that's really small, because I want you guys to basically kind of be done by the time you get into your spring semester. Um, so, uh, so maybe you could estimate 15 hours of work, give or take, uh, left across the semester after that. So it's, it's not that bad. Um, and um, let's see, what else did I wanna talk about? Uh, the cost is, I think, uh, very reasonable. I work very hard, Mahmoud has worked with me very hard also to get the cost down. Um, uh, and uh, I think the cost, and uh, Brittany maybe can give us more information on that. It's it's going to be definitely less than thirty five hundred. I think it's closer to thirty three or thirty two. Um, Brittany, do you have that? Okay, maybe she's going to type it yeah, for us. it's a uh, thirty two hundred. Thirty two. See, really good. Um, and that is half of that. About is your tuition for three credits for the spring semester. So you've already paid for three credits of your spring semester basically, and they're done. And that's um, also at the in-state rate. Uh, uh, anybody, it doesn't matter if you're an out-of-state student or an international student, if you take a global education class, you get it at the in-state rate, which is a nice benefit. Um, the other half covers your lodging, um, travel on the ground, um, any tours that we take, uh, the Jeeps that we have to rent to get to Marfa, uh, all that, the buses that we take to get anywhere. And a lot of your meals are covered as well. Um, not all of them though, but um, all you need to bring with you is max $200. Uh, uh, food is incredibly cheap there. You would have to go to a really nice place and get alcohol to get a tab that was near $5. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and you'll never be able to spend uh, even on snacks and things like that, um, all of your money. And if you bought souvenirs as well, uh, that would be more than what you would probably need to cover that. Um, the flights are also the responsibility of the students, but because we're doing this in the off season, uh, they are significantly less than usual. Um, I have had many students get tickets as low as 800. Uh, which is amazing if you think about a, a flight from here to London would be minimum six hundred dollars. Um, so that's a that's a pretty good deal. Um, we do have scholarships uh, available at Global Education. Um, if you are on financial aid or you have a GI Bill, all of that can be used. Um, and uh, uh, another thing to mention is the passports. Um, the Global Ed program has a grant that you can apply for to have the cost of your passport covered if you've never had a passport before. And that could be a, like a significant deal when they cost about $200. Um, and um, it's kind of like, I think it's sort of first come first serve. So you probably wanna do that soon. Um, also, if you don't have a passport, you need to work on that immediately because there is gonna be slowdowns because of COVID and you wanna make sure um, that you can get it in time. Um, and um, trying to think anything else. Um, so I wanted to, I guess since Madison, since you were here, I wanted to, to let you ask any questions that you would like. I know I'm, I'm not covering everything, um, the entire details of the class, but I'm happy to, to add more. Um, but when, um, uh, when we get ready to go, as soon as we get the green light that the university is like, you can do it, uh, we will have a big meeting where I'll cover everything from what to wear to, you know, airline stuff, ev every little detail that you could possibly want. But, but again, I can answer anything um, right now. And so can Mahmoud and, and Brittany. Madison, can you hear us? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, sorry, I can hear you. Um, so what program are you in? I can't remember. Um, communications. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And a minor in film. So. Oh, yes. Um, perfect then. Um, I don't really have any questions right now. Any okay. ideas when um, 
there might be a green light for the program? That's a great question. Um, and, and Brittany, are you still nearby? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you have any idea when, um, is there any information yet on when we'll know for sure that this is gonna go or not, according to the university? Probably sometime in mid-October, I think is when UTAC meets. Um, and okay. so we should have an idea um, around then. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we don't let you buy uh, plane tickets or anything else until that comes through. And um, so, uh, so that we don't, because that you couldn't get a reimbursement on obviously, but um, so, but we're building, we're working hard to build uh, the strong, some strong arguments for going. And we, um, <coughs> excuse me, Mahmoud and I uh, wouldn't offer this if we didn't feel confident that it could be done safely. Um, so, um, did you have any other questions, Madison? I, I'm happy to answer anything. Um, no, I don't have any more questions right now. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be keeping in touch with you over the next few weeks to, to keep you posted on anything I'm learning and, um, and just to be, make sure you know what else you need to do as far as the application and all that jazz, um, when deadlines are and that sort of thing. And then Madison, is it okay if I keep your question on the recording when we post it? Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay, thank you. So, Mahmoud, did you want to add anything or? Um, no, uh, Brittany, no, did I you want to? Uh, Mahmoud, did you, I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. No, no, I think you have covered everything. I mean, I uh, right now I just looked into the Nepal's uh, COVID situation. So mm -hmm. they are current today. I mean, it was 975, the people infected today. So it is very close to level two, basically. Mm -hmm. It's been decreasing for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's good news. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Brittany, did you want to add anything else? Um, I can't think of anything else to add really, um, other than um, applications are due October 10th, so a couple weeks away. Um, and then let me pull up the website, the program okay. brochure.